Well, today, everyone, we look at further spiritual blessings that are given to those of us who are Christians, as Paul lays out for us in the book of Ephesians. Today, we're looking at chapter 1, verses 11 through to 14. Now, there's only four verses, but even here, there is so much, and we could probably do a study each day through just one verse alone. It's so rich and so deep, and because of that, even today with four verses, we can't cover absolutely everything that is mentioned in them. We read part of it again in verse 11 that Brad has already covered for us, that we were predestined according to the purposes of God. So amazing, isn't it? And I don't want to say more because Brad covered that so well for us, but it's the Father's choice for us to be saved. He has elected you and saved you according to his good pleasure. And it is absolutely wonderful. And let me ask you, when you read that again, that you have been predestined according to the purposes of God. And last week, having discovered also that you were chosen before the foundation of the world by God to be his child, purely because of his grace and mercy towards you. How is it you should respond to that? What do you think would be an appropriate response to the grace and mercy of God in your life? When you hear also, as we looked at last week, that you have been given every spiritual blessing in Jesus Christ, what's your response to that? What would be an appropriate response? I think if our response is very little, if we do not worship God and give praise to him, if we do not give our life in devotion to him, then we would do well to go away. And to consider what the blessings are that we have received, to think about how significant it is to be God's child, and to try to better understand the gospel. And we need to pray then for God's mercy to let us see how wide and high and long and deep his love is for us. Because these wonderful truths demand a response. And so this then mentions the blessing of election. And he mentions it as part of verse 11. But one of the things actually that we need to do, especially when we read some of the letters of Paul, is to take out parts of the verse so that we can actually understand what it is he is saying. See, verses 11 and 12 have a key emphasis. But the key emphasis is not election. Election is really just given as a qualification. So if we read 11 and 12 this way, in him we have obtained an inheritance so that we who were the first to hope in Christ might be to the praise of his glory. That middle part, having been predestined according to the purposes of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, that's just a qualification. It is telling us that the reason we have received an inheritance is because we have been predestined. So to understand the verse, we take the middle bit out and we read these bits. We have obtained an inheritance so that we might be to the praise of his glory. What it also means is this, is that if you are not predestined, if you are not God's child, then you will not receive an inheritance. So we're going to learn to read Paul's letter as well and really try and work out what is the primary emphasis. And actually here, while the emphasis may well be on this inheritance, what we need to see is the inheritance is given in order that we might be for the praise of his glory. Verse 13 and 14 say largely the same thing. It says we have the Holy Spirit given to us for the praise of his glory. And once again, we need to read it well. There's a part of verse 13 sorry, that needs to come out. We read it. In him you also were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it to the praise of his glory. The little bit that's not highlighted there, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation and believed in him, tells us when we received the Holy Spirit. But the emphasis here is on the fact that we have received the Holy Spirit. It's given as a guarantee of our inheritance and we receive it to the praise of his glory. 
praise of his glory is such a key theme then all throughout what we are reading here. We've received an inheritance for the praise of his glory. We've received the Holy Spirit for the praise of his glory. And this Holy Spirit that we read of here is a guarantee, a down payment, a deposit until we acquire our inheritance. Now there's a couple of ways we can understand being given the Holy Spirit as a seal. One way is that it certifies our authenticity as a child of God. We bear the royal seal. In Acts chapter 10, we see the Holy Spirit is given to the Gentiles. And as a result, they say salvation has come to the Gentiles. The Holy Spirit was the evidence of that. And so for us, the Holy Spirit is that seal, the evidence that we have indeed been born again by God. Another aspect of the Holy Spirit, though, is that it is as a seal, is the fact that it protects and preserves Christians until they reach their inheritance. We were sealed with the Holy Spirit for the day of redemption. And so because we have the Holy Spirit, we have the guarantee that we will indeed reach heaven and Jesus. Jesus will be our inheritance, our great reward. And now having the Holy Spirit, we've also got to think about the fact that we have a responsibility to allow the Holy Spirit to work in our lives to transform and change us. It's the Holy Spirit alone, the, his power, who can change us and cause us to bear fruit in our lives. And as he does that, as we're transformed and changed and as we bear fruit, he gives us a foretaste of what he will fully and finally do when Jesus comes back. And it is how we will be changed for all eternity. And so then, in light of these few verses, let me ask, who has saved you? It's God, isn't it? I mean, it's so clear, the deeper and deeper we get into this book, even in the few verses only we've looked at so far, God has done absolutely everything. He has chosen you. He has redeemed you. He has forgiven you. He has lavished his grace upon you. He's made known to you the mystery of his will. He's given you an inheritance and he protects and he keeps all that he has done for us and all that he has given to us by sealing us with the Holy Spirit. God initiates our salvation. He fulfills and completes our salvation. He keeps, protects and guarantees our salvation. From beginning to end, our salvation is from God. Of that there is no doubt. I could also ask, who is our salvation for? Well, it's for us, of course, we are the benefit fisheries of it. But it's also for the glory of God, isn't it? Perhaps of first importance it is for the glory of God. You were redeemed, you were saved, you were given inheritance, you were given the Holy Spirit for the praise of his glory. So while we are the grateful recipients of it, what we receive is an order that God be praised, that he be glorified and honoured in our lives. I began by asking the question, what's your response to the wonderful truths that we have even so far looked at in this book? Surely, surely it is to live in such a way that God is honoured, glorified, worshipped and praised. How then are you going to live today? What are you going to do with God today? Lord, we have received such a great salvation. We thank you for that. We praise you that, Lord, it was not anything to do with us. Salvation has come to us by you alone, your good purposes, your chosen will for us. We are your elect. And we praise and thank you, our Father. Lord, may we understand that richly, deeply, thoroughly so that our response will be to give you glory, honour and praise, that today we are going to lift you high with our lives, with our words, with our thoughts and in all our deeds. You are worthy and we pray now for your help this day.